On the news tonight, Reps appoint Ben Omogo to oversee the National Health Insurance Scheme. In business, Senate talks Finance Ministry on addressing 8.63 billion naira subsidy payments. And on the foreign scene, ferry slam into crane in Barcelona ports. A beautiful evening to you and a warm welcome to Super Screen Flagship News at 8, broadcasting to you live from our studios in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. I am Blessed Omondose. And now the stories in details. A director from the Federal Ministry of Health, Ben Amogo, has been appointed to oversee the Embattled National Health Insurance Scheme, NHIS. The Minister of Finance, Professor Isaac Adewale, made this known during an investigative hearing organized by the House Ad Hoc Committee on the Inherent Crisis submerging the scheme in Abuja. Mr. President, in his wisdom, asked the years to come back to work on 6 February 2018. Uh, but then, uh, with the coming on board of the Council, I thought um, things will now stabilize because there is now a shift between the scheme and the ministry. But unfortunately, we were inundated by complaints by, by workers, by the council, which I mandated the PS, who is new and neutral, to handle. As a president, to be the overseeing director, uh, interim. And uh, the, there is also a directive this morning that uh, the handing over process will be completed before 2 p.m. tomorrow between the years and the overseeing director. In our submission, the Secretary Governing Board, NHIS, Dr. Iyantu Ifini, alleged that the scheme was marred with undue process, just as the Chairman asked of Committee, ADOC, Honorable Osai Osai, suspending the probe till tomorrow to allow the suspended Executive Secretary, Osman Yusuf, present a submission. The most important and the third key player in the circle that traps and releases is NHIS itself. Unfortunately, this institution is caught up in crisis. Allegations of corruption, which were past, present, and ongoing. As a result, NHIS has failed to regulate as per the law and instead has become in some cases, the enabler is that the broom that sweeps corruption should be squeaky clean. And if it is not squeaky clean, at least it should be cleaner than the environment it is trying to clean. I don't have all this say in my statement, but I don't know. We have, our, our own is a petition. I don't know if you see it. Now, so you are still doing behind the money we are talking about. From our general, Minister of Finance, arbitrarily they deducted our money from our account. Those people shouting to see the one to the school, there are issues unattended to. Uh, if it's not addressed, it will give room for anybody that comes in to do arbitrarily to the scheme, however I like. The committee promised to treat submissions and petitions with utmost fairness they deserve. We sincerely request the cooperation of all consigned to enable us to conclude this assignment as scheduled. It is my firm belief that the contentious issues affecting the smooth operation of national health insurance will be resolved amicably at the end of our assignment. And now talking politics, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has won the national leader of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Tinubu, over his mayor campaign against its presidential candidate, Atiku Abubakar. PDP, in a statement by spokesperson Kola Ologbodion, wants Tunubu not to reduce himself by engaging in indecorous or trances. You will recall that Tunubu had on Wednesday dismissed the strategic meeting held by Abubakar in Dubai. An ad hoc committee of the Nigerian Senate has commenced an investigation hearing into an alleged $3.5 billion fuel subsidy fund allegedly created by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC. The committee of 15 senators, chaired by Senate Majority Leader, Senator Ahmed Lawan, greets the GMD, NNPC, and the representative of Finance Minister on the veracity of existence of such fund without the knowledge of the National Assembly. Whatever public funds will be used, there will be accountability, 
probity and transparency. And that at the end of it all, there will be economy, there will be efficiency and effectiveness in the way and manner public funds are utilized. So this investigative hearing is an opportunity for both sides, both the executive and legislative arms of government, in this particular case, Senate representing the legislature, that where expenditures are incurred, permissions or approvals are supposed to be granted. Where we have permissions granted, or because of certain provisions in our laws or statute books, expenditures are granted, are, are incurred without public or approval by the National Assembly, what we expect is to see and ensure that processes and procedures are firm and foolproof, that nobody takes advantage of the system. On his part, Group Managing Director, Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Michael Tibaro Desmis, reports claiming he has, he has three point. $5 billion subsidy fund. The chairman may wish to note that NNPC does not operate any $3.5 billion petroleum subsidy funds as alleged. There is no provision for subsidy in the Appropriation Act since 2016. So it will be illegal for NNPC to operate any account. The spenders that we are concerned with relate to budgeted and appropriated. Uh, funds. Uh, we are not aware that there is any, any of such funds. So, um, uh, what we know is the importation done by the NPC as a business entity. They import and, um, and sell. And, um, that doesn't come under the purview of, of what, uh, what we do in the ministry. The committee has to given the GM the opportunity to submit to its relevant document concerning the operations of $1.5 billion. The Lagos State House of Assembly has begun a three-day retreat to review the state environmental law and nine others to meet global best practices. Speaker of the House, Modashiro Obasa, who made this known at the retreat in Abekata, said it is aimed at revisiting the state laws to enhance their operational capacity for development. Obasa said for the House to move Lagos State forward, there is the need to put in place laws that are enduring and in conformity to the interests of the people. The Speaker stressed that there is nothing like visionscape in the new environmental law of the state, adding that there is there are sections of the law that give an opportunity to the executive arm to have private-public partnership. And still in Lagos State, the People's Democratic Party PDP governorship candidate in Lagos State, Jimmy Agbaje, has announced a lawyer, Alimat Busari, as his running mate. A statement by the director of media and publicity of the Jimmy Agbaje campaign organization, Felix Ogbuwa Wina, said the PDP candidate, Pik Busari, following comprehensive consultations with leaders and stakeholders within and outside the party. According to Ubu Agwana, Bosari will be bringing to the joint ticket a vers versatility and connections as a professional in corporate governance, as a Muslim activist and as a bona fide doctor of a native of Lagos State. Now ahead of the 2019 general elections, traditional rulers from the Yewa Awori zone in Ogun State, led by the Olu of Ilaru and paramount ruler of the Yewa land, have endorsed the candidacy of the African Democratic Congress governorship candidate, 
Prince Boyega Isiaka. According to the monarchs, Isiaka remained the choice candidate to actualize the aspirations of Ogun West Senatorial District in producing the governor for the first time since the creation of the state. They gave the endorsement at a meeting of the Yerwa Traditional Council Ed in Ilaru, where the ADC governorship candidate was formally presented to the people. Speaking on behalf of the monarchs, Oba Olugbinli said the people are ready to entrust their future in the hands of a competent candidate. A suspected, Boko Ar suspected members of the Boko Haram terrorist group have killed no fewer than 15 people in an attack in some villages close to Maiduguri, the Brono state capital. Security operatives were faced with superior firepower and outnumbered as over 200 insurgents reportedly came for the attack. The terrorists set ablaze the ass of one of the villages along with four members of his family. Other villages attacked by the terrorists are Mba Maluti, Gozari, and Dauri two internally displaced persons IDP camp, all in Konduga local government area of the state. However, the police and relevant agencies are yet to issue any statement about the number of those killed in the attack. As the news, a seven-man panel set up to probe the bribery allegations involving, involving Kano State Governor Abdullahi Gadji has summoned him to appear before it on November the 2nd, 2018. In a letter received and stamped by the, gov by the Office of the Executive Governor, Government asks Kano State requested for the appearance of Gadji at the investigative hearing to provide the committee with his perspective on the allegation. Apart from that, the committee granted the governor the, li the liberty to appear with his lawyer if he so desires. Adding that, enclosed are the video clips of the alleged bribe as submitted by the daily Nigerian publisher, Jafar Jafar, when he appeared before the committee last week. And coming up on Super Screen Flagship News at 8, Senate Tax Finance Ministry on addressing 863 billion naira subsidy payment. We'll bring you details of this and more in our business news after this break. Stay with us. Glad to have you back. You're watching Super Screen Flagship News at 8. And now to business news. The Senate Committee on Petroleum Downstream has charged Finance Ministry to sort out all pending issues concerning the delayed payment of 863 billion naira subsidy claims owned by all marketers. This charge was given at a meeting by the Senate Committee, which had chief executives of all marketing companies, government agencies, among other stakeholders in attendance. At the meeting of the Senate Committee on Petroleum Downstream with stakeholders in the sector, Chairman of the Senate Committee, Senator Kabiru Marafa, gave a timeline of a week for the Finance Ministry to present a report of the meeting's outcome. In the early days of President Muhammadu Buhari's led administration, the petroleum subsidy regime during the previous administration was brought to a halt due to oil marketers' demand for the outstanding claims of 607 billion naira. But following meetings with the oil marketers and the government, between June 2016 and last year, the claims were reviewed downwards to 386 billion naira, with the National Assembly's approval sealing the deal. Shockingly, however, that agreement signed as at June last year has not been reached, a development the Senate committee expressed disappointment about. You promised that you are going to talk to these commercial banks to stop charging interest. Is it? Stop charging interest and uh, some other things. If it is within your power, for God's sake, do it. If it is not within your power, why should you even promise that in the first place? Because it is possible for future now. From a debt of maybe below 200 billion, today we are talking of 1 trillion. So how can we continue with this? It is just not possible. While Marafa urged the Central Bank of Nigeria to ask commercial banks to address the issue of soaring interest rates accruing from the pending payments of the subsidy claims, the Director General of the Debt Management Office, Patience Oniha, said her office had concluded plans to engage oil marketers from mid-November. Finance will take the lead, invite all the stakeholders, look at all these problems 
I think this is a monster that if allowed it can consume everybody. Let us uh, put an end to it. Let us know what it is. If these marketers are lying, please come out that day to say that uh, these claims are frivolous. They are lies. And these are the reasons. In terms of final approval to run with this process, uh, which was communicated to the minister and then sent to us, the final approval, complete approval, was only September 2018. I'm guessing let's put that on the table. One who got communication saying both the Senate and the House are approved. I think that's what the law says. It talks about the National Assembly, not Senate only and not House only. So just to put that on record, sir, approvals. And the manner described by the laws was only in September 2018. A cross-section of oil marketers present at the meeting relate some of their harrowing experiences while they await the payment of their subsidy claims. If we don't pay the banks, they are going to seize our assets. If they seize our assets, jobs are going to be lost. The economy is going to be worse for it. So in the event of the failure of the subsidy claim, we will not be The controversial subject of subsidy payments remains a difficult challenge. With these latest sittings, expectations are high that they will come to a conclusion where both parties can smile. Excellent business. President Muhammad Dubari says Nigeria's economy on this watch is looking good. He, however, promised his administration commitment to make it better. According to a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Femi Adishino, the president made the assertion while receiving the new ambassador of the Kingdom of Denmark to Nigeria, Jesper Kam, at the presidential villa today. President Buhari said Nigerian welcome for the strengthening of relations with countries, especially in the areas of agriculture and trade. Adding that, he is pleased with the relationship between Nigeria and Denmark have remained strong. However, President Buhari admitted that the economy fair, there is still more work to be done. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, says the Kaduna Refining and Petrochemical Company has remained dormant. According to NNPC, the refinery capacity utilization has remained at zero for month as the KRPC is not refining crude oil despite receiving the commodity. In its latest monthly oil and gas report for June 2018, NNPC stated that its group trading surplus dropped from 18.11 billion in May to 7.15 billion in June this year. This implies that the oil firm lost 10.96 billion naira in terms of its trading surplus within one month. NNPC further said the performance the performances of the refinery show that the KRPC received 78.833 metric tons of crude in the month of May and June this year. It, however, processed no drop of crude oil in the two months as its capacity utilization was given at 0%. Away from business still ahead on the news, ferry slams into crane in Barcelona port. We'll bring you details of this and more in our foreign news. Stay with us. <laughs> 